subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 21st of October. India crosses historic 1 billion COVID-19 vaccine milestone. PM Modi says triumph of Indian science. Taliban promises Afghan territory will not be used against any country at Moscow talks. And Daily commuters in Pakistan lament increasing fuel prices amid rising inflation. And now for all the details. India celebrated the milestone of administering 1 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses on Thursday with Prime Minister Narendra Modi calling the feat as triumph of Indian science. The Prime Minister marked the occasion by interacting with healthcare workers at a government hospital in capital New Delhi while the health ministry organized musical and other programs across the country. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday paid a visit to Dr. Ram Manohar Lohia Government Hospital in capital New Delhi as the country crossed another significant milestone in its battle against the coronavirus pandemic. as it touched 1 billion covid-19 vaccinations the prime minister earlier in the day in a tweet said india has scripted history we are witnessing the triumph of indian science enterprise and collective spirit of 1.3 billion indians after a slow beginning in the middle of january india's immunization campaign has covered three quarters of its 944 million adults with at least one dose but only 31% with two doses the government wants all adults to get vaccinated this year ab se kuch dur pehle hi 100 crore vaccine dose ka aankda paar kar liya hai 100 saal mein aayi sabse badi mahamari ka mukabla karne ke liye desh ke paas ab 100 crore vaccine dose ka mazboot suraksha kavach hai Meanwhile health minister Mansukh Mandavia launched an audio visual film and a large tricolor flag was also displayed at the Mughal era red fort in New Delhi to mark the important milestone while healthcare workers celebrated with cake cutting ceremonies and other elaborate events across the country India as of Thursday reported 178831 active cases of covid-19 despite the current low number of infections Ministry officials have been urging people to get vaccinated fast especially as the ongoing festival season means family gatherings and mass shopping raising the risk of a new wave of infections Afghanistan's new Taliban rulers won backing from 10 regional powers at talks in Moscow on Wednesday for the idea of a UN donor conference to help the country stave off economic collapse and a humanitarian catastrophe The Taliban delegation promised that the Afghan territory will not be used against any country. Meanwhile, the UN has set up a special trust fund to provide urgently needed cash directly to Afghans through a system tapping into donor funds frozen since the Taliban takeover in August. Russia hosted a high-level meeting on Afghanistan on Wednesday in which the representatives of over 10 countries including Pakistan, China, Iran and India participated. The United States stayed away citing technical reasons. Russia increased pressure on the Taliban to create an inclusive government representing a broad spectrum of Afghan society as it hosted their new administration for the first time since they took power. The Taliban delegation led by Deputy Prime Minister of Afghanistan's interim government Abdul Salam Hanafi said the group is looking forward to building good relations with other countries. Hanafi told a news conference following the meeting that it would not let any group undermine the security of Afghans or countries in the region. Agar hukumat jadid ba rasmiyat shinakhta nashavad va himayat nashavad در اینجا طبعا گروه هایی که امنیت را اخلال میکنند طبعا آنها تقویت میشوند 
پالیسی حکومت جدیدی است که ما هیچ کس را هیچ گروهی را اجازه نمیدیم که امنیت مردم افغانستان و همچنان امنیت همسایگان افغانستان و امنیت کشورهای منطقه و فرامنطقه را تخریب بکند. With Afghanistan facing economic collapse and a humanitarian catastrophe, Moscow called for international aid to support Kabul, conscious that any spillover could threaten regional stability. Meanwhile, the United Nations said on Thursday it has set up a special trust fund to provide urgently needed cash directly to Afghans through a system tapping into donor funds frozen since the Taliban takeover in August. Germany, a first contributor, had pledged 58 million US dollars to the fund. Taliban's takeover saw billions in central bank assets frozen and international financial institutions suspend access to funds, although humanitarian aid has continued. Banks are running out of money, civil servants have not been paid and food prices have soared. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's opposition parties have accused Prime Minister Imran Khan of selling gifts he received from heads of other countries, including an expensive watch worth 1 million US dollars. The Pakistan government has refused to make public the details of gifts, asserting the disclosure can damage the country's relations with other nations. Pakistan's opposition parties have accused Prime Minister Imran Khan of selling gifts he received from heads of other countries, including an expensive watch worth one million US dollars, gifted by a prince of a Gulf country. Gifts are routinely exchanged between heads of states or officers holding constitutional positions during a state visit. According to the rules of the Tosha Khana or the gift depository, these gifts remain the property of the state unless sold at an open auction. Rules allow officials to retain gifts with a market value of less than Rs 10,000 without paying anything. Opposition PMLN party Vice President Mariam Nawaz in a tweet said, Caliph Hazrat Omar said he was accountable even if a dog dies hungry. And Imran Khan, on the other hand, looted foreign gifts from Tosha Khana and talks of setting up a state of Medina amid inflation. Mulana Fazlur Rahman, the president of multi-party opposition alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement, said, The reports that PM Khan has sold a precious watch he received from a prince is shameful. Last month, the Pakistan government had refused to make public details of gifts given to the Prime Minister, asserting that the disclosure can damage the country's relations with other states. More news from Pakistan. Daily commuters in Pakistan's Karachi city have expressed dismay over another substantial hike in fuel prices this month, which has shaken their domestic budgets. They have lamented the government is not bothered about the difficulties they are facing amid an all-time high inflation. The recent hike in fuel prices has given another jolt to locals and daily commuters in Pakistan's Karachi city who are already disappointed by the rising inflation in the country and have expressed distress over the move. The price of petrol has been hiked by Rs 10.49 per litre and high-speed diesel by Rs 12.44 per litre. The new price of petrol is Rs 137.79 per litre, while diesel cost of Rs 134.48 now since this past weekend. Locals have claimed that the Prime Minister Imran Khan-led government is not bothered about the difficulties being faced by the poor due to the rising prices of commodities which have shaken their domestic budgets. जो भी जुल्म हो रहा है हम कराची वालों पे हो रहा है। खुदा के लिए यार खाना पीना हमसे छीन लिया है। ये आखरी जो पेट्रोल था वो भी तुम हमसे छीन रहे हो गाड़ियाँ हम किस तरीके से ये माजूर बच्चा इसको मैं लेकर आया हूँ? क्या करेंगे यार हम गरीब आदमी तो परेशान हो गए हैं पेट्रोल सीएनजी पे भी परेशान है Meanwhile, Pakistan's Information Minister Fawad Chaudhry on Wednesday said that while the prices of petroleum products had increased, the prices of other essentials including pulses, vegetables, sugar and wheat were on the decline. Contrary to Chaudhry's claims, Planning Minister Asad Umar had earlier this week ruled out immediate relief in rising commodity prices. Painting the recent price hike in Pakistan on the international market, Umar said this spell was not expected to subside before March 2022. Moving on to news from Nepal. 
The death toll due to floods and landslides triggered by heavy rains in Nepal climbed to more than 85 on Thursday. Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba has directed immediate relief and rescue operations as the recent disaster has affected 20 districts in all, causing widespread damage to property as well as ready to harvest crops. The death toll in the series of floods and landslides following days of unseasonal rains in Nepal rose to more than 85 and around 30 people remain missing as of Thursday. Nepal Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba has directed immediate relief and rescue operations. An emergency meeting of the cabinet held on Wednesday afternoon announced to provide rupees 200,000 as immediate relief to the family of those killed and rupees 50,000 in immediate relief for constructing makeshift shelters and compensation to farmers whose crops have been destroyed. The recent disaster has affected 20 districts in all, causing widespread damage to property as well as ready-to-harvest crops. The eastern hilly region of Panchthar district has witnessed 27 deaths, the highest number of fatalities so far, reports suggested. Flash floods and landslides are common in Nepal during the monsoon season that normally lasts from June to September. However, it has prolonged this year mainly due to climate change, experts say. India is boosting its overall firepower along the 1,300-kilometer long line of actual control in the eastern sector in the face of China's aggressive posturing following the Ladakh standoff. The Indian Army has beefed up overall defenses in the region, especially in the Tawang sector in Arunachal Pradesh, by integrating various services in real time through automation. India has deployed its latest M777 ultralight howitzers along with the battle-proven Bofors artillery guns at Tabang sector near the line of actual control LAC to tackle any threat from the Chinese side in the eastern sector. The force has also deployed the upgraded version of the L-70 anti-aircraft guns at high-altitude locations along the LAC. The upgraded vintage L-70 air defense guns have enhanced target acquisition and automatic target tracking capabilities under all weather conditions with high-resolution electro-optical sensors. Deputy Commander of Aviation Brigade of the area, Navneet Kahil, on Wednesday said the Airspace Control Center has been built to be more vigilant along the LAC. New raising brigade for the eastern sector, which has just come up. We are just about six months old and we have established our core airspace control center for the first time in the forward area and we have enmeshed ourselves with the field formations and all our assets are now totally integrated with the field formations. To boost its battle preparedness, the Indian Army is undergoing P-190 program which makes the soldier undergo tough physical and mental training along with drills on a daily basis. Thousands of Indian and Chinese troops have been locked in a high-altitude face-off in India's Ladakh region since last year despite the two militaries holding more than a dozen rounds of talks to defuse the situation. India moved troops to its eastern stretch of the border since the clashes erupted last year. Arunachal Pradesh, which China calls South Tibet, was at the center of a full-scale border war between India and China in 1962, and security analysts have warned that it could become a flashpoint again. The beautiful and popular Bira Lake in the middle of Sri Lanka's capital, Colombo, offers locals and foreign tourists not just a pleasant and tranquil view, but also a quiet retreat from the hustle and bustle of urban life. Spread over 65 hectares, the lake was created by Portuguese rulers of Sri Lanka more than five centuries ago to serve as a moat to defend their fort. The lake is today an urban oasis, a beautiful home for a variety of elegant water birds. The blessed water of the lake attracts spotted wild pelicans, cormorants, herons, colourful storks and many more other birds. Seeing the tourism generating potential of the lake, the Sri Lankan authorities stepped up pollution control measures. At the end of 2020, the local government also began to implement the Ecological Floating Treatment Wetlands Project, a technology that uses plants to clean severely polluted water bodies. Soon many floating green islands appeared on the lake. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.